every single I, time. I would with, too, though. Like, I, I, would, I would get into my groove and just be like, hey, this is what they want to hear. I'll give it to I, them. I, I like, mix it up. I try to. Yeah. And and it's actually funny because when we we posted your interview that that we you and me had done a terrific con, yep. we, Leo brought up, he was like, wow, did why did you shut him down about about uh advertising his kickstarter i was like i forgot that we can do that i i didn't <laughs> and i and, and i was like oh i felt like i didn't realize i did it because i was like in the middle of a no hitter uh with, with interviews you were like my like my 10th in a row i was running on so much adrenaline yeah, drew was on fire that day i i literally my uh, to quote nick cage in a movie carrie hates like I felt like my skull was on fire. <laughs> um, and and Leo pointed out, and I and I was like, wait a second, review the minutes. Oh shit, I did say that. I was like, man, I I felt so bad because you're 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 so polite and and accommodating, and I was just like, like, do you fuck over the guy who wrote Hellraiser? That's like how you die. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's it's. I still have, I still have some pull with the dead of night it's true yeah, you're okay definitely. you're safe we, we've yeah. all we're all friends yeah so so small apologies everybody make sure you know what you're talking about before you say no on camera because then leo <laughs> will call it out so thanks leo oh you're welcome you're welcome. i can't believe you did that i must have missed it oh I, there... I i cut it out it was oh, okay. it, it, it was it was very fast, hey, but I remembered listen, it. I was coming like, oh, coming oh. off that panel, like we've talked about before, you knew who I was, which was a big step up from what I, where I've been <laughs> an hour before. So, could you please you know. tell me about your contributions to uh, Moon Knight? Moon Knight, yeah. <laughs> kind of my contributions to Moon Knight. Wasn't the Moon Knight TV show great? Let's not revisit that. Uh, oh, they, let's move on to hell. Panel. Oh What's no! That? I, yeah, I hard said hard. you were yeah. part of that panel. I didn't. Yeah, know that. me, Howard, see, Mackie, was... and Terry Cavanaugh. We had we had we had a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, I, I heard it was wonderful. I heard the 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 panel host and everything was just right on right on point. It, it, In the groove, stay it, on target. It, it was like Jeremy. It was like watching three Marvel uh, magicians all just up there saying like, well, this is how we did the trick, okay? Like, there's like, you could do it too, except you weren't us. So it was, you know, if we gave them all, like if they all had unlimited beer, we would have got, you know, Marvel after dark. <laughs> that would have been good. That, that's, they should fill those tumblers with something aside from water. You're right. Yeah, exactly. I, I love Mackie pulling up his phone to start Googling. Did I really do that? <laughs> Oh, no, he, like, was, he was he was he was he was seeing if he could get travel out of that that conference hall right there. He was like, "Could I book a trip out of this room?" Like that's what yeah. Like and and then when we had him on the show, it was it was one of those where no, that's that literally who he is. He like Carrie would bring up. He was like, "I did that." I was like, "Okay, sure, yes." And he was like, "Yeah, no, it was great." I'm like, "Okay, well, if it was great, then yeah, I totally did that." And I was like, "That Mackie, you know, so in the land of make believe, as long as you go go along with it." So, so it, like I said uh, before we said show, I had never, I, had, I, I was unfamiliar with the night breed. So mm -hmm. I had to do the research. So I watched the movie. Mm -hmm. um, and I also rewatched Hellraiser because that's a classic. I, I love that, that, that world. And, and I was like, wow, the scope of, of your crossover and just two issues mm -hmm. was crazy because nowadays, and we've talked about this on the show, like if they've made it now, this would be like, what do you think, Jar? Like seven, eight issues? And, at least. At least. And you did it in two. Might like, even I mean, get there, were, there were big issues, yeah. But like the storytelling, I was like, wow, this is a big story. And then your artistic cre um, collaborator, that Paul was Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. And fabulous. Be incredible. Beautiful, beautiful work. Like, I, yeah, exactly. Beautiful. Like bloody, evil, gory. Yeah. Things. And yeah, beautiful. Really. At the same time, I mean, Absolutely. just shockingly beautiful, um, mm -hmm. and and uh, yeah, you know, it was a, a crystallized experience, like in in so many ways. Um, I uh, will get into all whatever details you want, but I, I actually felt like it was the perfect length, you know, for for what it needed to be. I did not feel constrained. I think I didn't mm -hmm. make uh, some of my, you know, I'll, I'll often torture myself and say, oh, I. I didn't quite stick the landing on something or um or you know I, I rushed the ending or that kind of kind of thing and this mm -hmm. just even though there's just a 
excuse me, fuck ton of stuff going on a in ton. this uh, in this story. Um, it all just feels like the exact right uh, combination. And then uh, the ending to me is just lyrical. The ending came to me so early on and uh, Pinhead was just like whispering in my ear, just, you know, that Doug Bradley voice saying, this is the last line I'm going to say. Like I knew the last line of that story. I think the minute I sat down to write it, it was, uh -huh. just, it was that kind of experience. Had you written Hellraiser before any Hellraiser stuff before this? No, I I had never seen the movies or no. Yes, I had a lot to do with the Hellraiser. <laughs> well, well, I was just wondering how how I, how you got had, yeah. to do these. I had I had written uh, I had obviously I'd seen the movies and then I was uh, uh, instrumental. Uh, Clive, I think, at one point gave me the uh, the moniker of uh, the Godfather of the the Clive. Barker's Hellraiser comic, uh, me mm -hmm. and Archie Goodwin, I think, were the co-godfathers. So I had, I, had, I'll go out on a limb and say, I co-created the comic uh, mm -hmm. with Archie and Clive, and um, and so uh, had brought that to life and figured out how we're going to translate the movies into the comic anthology. And then I was the regular editor for a couple of issues, and then I was the consulting editor for most, if not all, of its run, and then uh, would also contribute a number of of stories. Uh, to um the hellraiser uh anthology along the way you know, I, I didn't overstay my welcome but every now and again i I'd, I'd raise my hand and say i've got an idea can i can oh. you just get me in without pitching it and most of the time they did so <laughs> so i was pretty familiar with the the world and uh, and then i had also launched the nightbreed comic when i was an editor and um and and had the smarts to bring on alan grant and john wagner um and uh jim bakey so we really went a team on the comic book adaptation um which was unusual usually you do comic book adaptations of movies and you're sort of like who's available who's under a rock who's waiting in the hallway and we went for some top tier talent and got them and they really leaned very heavily into it i think made that adaptation uh really sing and then when they ran out their run and the book was going to continue, that was probably the most singularly shameless moment in comics for me because I went into the editor uh, who was going to take over the book. And I said, I'm, I'm taking over this book. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt, Dan. There's just this oh. moment here. I, I yeah. have to yes. tell you, uh, being a Hellraiser fan, this, this this moment killed me because because I don't think and I've watched enough Hellraiser to say that I'm a decent fan. Like I know exactly where in my mind it just we went off the rails, and I have very little love for the remake they did. I do I do like as we coined it the Hulu Razor. Um, I, did, I did like that, but this moment, and I said this to Carrie, I was like, this is my top five favorite moments. And right. Leo, if you, if you can blow this up, I feel like I, I have to try reading this in the Doug Bradley voice <laughs> because I've never not only seen, like I've seen Pinhead be snarky because he's that, but holy crap, I've never seen him insult somebody <laughs> like this. And I, 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 I died. I was like, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank yeah. You, thank seriously. You. Like, like it's, it, it was, it was, it was the thing that I loved is that it was said. And then Alistair has that moment where he's like, wait a second, what? And then it, his lover's like, he just Read called comment, me. Drew. What? Read I'm sorry. Oh. Read. Read. I'm, I'm trying to, oh, okay. Yours is a rectum by which the abyss itself pales in comparison <laughs> and then you know uh is that so well let me tell you something what did he say i think he just called you hell's biggest asshole <laughs> <laughs> like like i i i died like i, I actually paused and took a minute to let that sink <laughs> into what's left of my brain i was just like See, yes. you can't, that that's what I mean. You can't write lines like that. They're they're channeled. I, I really feel they are. Like when characters um work and they kind of come to life for you, mm -hmm. you're just sort of like doing this keyboard Ouija board sort of thing and just uh you know, they're they're telling yeah. you what, what they're gonna say. And that that was another moment I felt uh that that just came forward so early on and so quickly i couldn't i couldn't write this book fast enough mm -hmm. to try to keep up with um 
what they almost all wanted to say and do. Uh, yeah, I, I just, I, I, I could Thank not. Thank you. Thank you for been, calling that up, though. I'm just well, admiring the artist. Leo's flying by it. Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, we reviewed the, the book. We reviewed the book very quickly, so this is splash. <laughs> so if you see something, call it out, please. <laughs> one, one other thing that I noticed that uh, you know, Paul did, I'm assuming by design, and like at this point, it's at night, so there's come, you know some kind of blues and stuff in here. But oftentimes, most of the scenes involving the night breed have very warm mm -hmm. colors, a lot of yellow and red and orange, and things going over them. Like, like right in here. Right. But uh, in hell, it's very, it's the cold and the blues and even the yellow that surrounds Leviathan is somehow a cold muted yellow. I, I think that was very intentional on Paul's part because as we, we sort of talked about last time, because we, we did dive pretty deep into hell and Hellraiser and such, you, yeah. you know, the, 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 the conceit, you know, the thing that Clive, and I arrived at, you know, and, you know, as we, we discussed what I had done on Hellraiser and what we had done is we created the Hellraiser comic. And then as I got into writing Nightbreed and understanding what, what Nightbreed was and what was the differenti differentiation between the two, right? Um, his hell was um, uh, contradicting most expectations. You know, hell is pandemonium. Hell is disorder. Hell is all those things. His hell was discipline. Right. His hell was the extraordinary, extreme precision, you know, of of order, order beyond all other things. And the night breed, by contrast, were disorder. I mean, that obviously comes through with a two by four in the story. So I think that that sense of um, of the the warmth and the organic qualities of the colors when it's about the night breed uh, and the the pale precision, if you will, uh -huh. um, uh, Paul and I didn't really ever talk about that, um, but I, I, it felt so right uh, when you see it, and and you guys are picking up there, even there in that shift right there, as you're kind of going, you know, right as hell kind of comes in, um, mm -hmm. you know, the color does the shift to the palette really quickly. Yeah, that's true. So just um, gorgeous. There, there was actually another thing I had is is that um, it's actually kind of piggybacking this theme that that hopefully I'm actually hoping gets picked up in horror because it's kind of something that um i thought of when reading this is that i don't know if you saw the the movie uh, the predator movie prey which yeah i loved it yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and i i saw somebody who was like wow we need to do more movies like this where it's like horror franchises in the past and it was like uh like uh, i'm not exactly i don't remember there was like three pitches but the one that i loved was it was like the ancient greeks and a puzzle box Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow. Like, it was just mm -hmm. one of those where, yes, please. Um, especially because, as you know, uh, in your run, history is a big part of Hellraiser. Um, especially sure. Could because, be. mm -hmm. as we've seen in the other movies, that it's not just modern day, that the, the Cenobites have been finding co converts for hundreds of years, maybe even thousands so yep. there's there's big history there so i guess the question i had is is reading this did you ever have like a story like you're you're back to writing daredevil right now as part of mm -hmm. the marvel nostalgia if they ever had an idea would you ever like how do i say this would you ever pitch like a a lost hellraiser story or or something like that which like something you'd be like oh you know what that's a good idea like your little hi i have an idea I have, I have oh yeah i mean i i I love these worlds. I mean, I, I, I enjoyed the heck out of them, no pun intended. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, so if there was ever an opportunity to kind of return to them, um, I would, uh, I'm sure I could cook up something, you know, not necessarily mm -hmm. even thinking about it, like as a lost Hellraiser story, it's just simply, le you start to lean into that. I, I mean, I think Prey obviously worked, you know, great as, a, a, that predating history thing, but Prey is also just a great movie. Right. Right. It's just it's just a really well executed movie with mm -hmm. really strong characters right. and not just trying to repeat the same old formula. That's the success of a prey or right. any story. You know, you, you know, it's the people who are going to get lost in it and sort of say, just like they get lost in Barbie and they're saying, great, let's make a magic eight ball movie. You know, you know, it's not like saying every movie needs to be part of a franchise and we're going yeah. to historically operate it. That could be a great movie, too. I'm not saying right. that it couldn't be. 
Right. But Prey was a revelation because, wow, you just like had an extraordinarily strong leading character. They're, mm -hmm. they're clever. They're, they're not just fodder. Um, right. And so I think that one of the things that makes this work for me or made it work for me, mm -hmm. you know, was this wasn't a murder by numbers thing, right? right. It was not the, the, the night breed, uh, wiping the floor with the Cenobites, and it was not the Cenobites wipe. Oh, those were looking at this axe. <laughs> <That was, laughs> Somebody's getting yeah, some right, wiped right. there, but good, good stopping point. <clears throat> but um, you know, I love them both, right. and so I didn't have a, a horse in this race except to tell a good story. Right. So there was this shifting allegiances, if you will, you mm -hmm. know, to kind of go back and forth uh, between them. And then again, finding that moment when I realized, well, Baphomet's a god, and and they need a god on their side, and <laughs> you know these things just came together um, in this in this way. And then it not being, you know, as you were going at the beginning of this, you know, not a not hey, we're pals now. No, it's uh, no, convenience, yeah. uh, allegiance of convenience. Yeah. Um, a couple panels that, or a couple pages up there. Um, they, you don't have to go up, Leo, it's fine. Uh, when no. the chatter catches <laughs> the axe in his teeth, oh, yeah, um, mm -hmm. and they go over and refer to him as Nicolante Kuntle, if I'm pronouncing that right, I'm not Aztec, and so giving it my best shot. But, um, so cool. This is this is I'm nerding out on something, but uh, he is one of the Aztec gods of the dead. <laughs> And mm -hmm. one of his other names that he goes by or another avatar of him translates into broken face. Now, is that why mm -hmm. he was given that name? Yeah. I mean, I was, I was did, definitely. Uh, did, did you do that up. or did Clive do that? I wasn't sure. No, there. I did all the namings here. I'm going to take okay. credit for um, it. And if Clive <laughs> ever gets on and disputes me, then I will go with Clive, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I did <laughs> okay. this. I will, I will always err on the awesome. side of giving Clive deference, but um it and how uh, do you pronounce it? <laughs> I have no freaking clue. I mean, don't even know. I mean, I, I mean, I was such a mythology nerd and demon nerd, and you know, Carrie, you were, you know, I think you you, you posted uh, something about like all those demonology books I was putting out. Those oh, yeah. were like I've had some of those since since these days. Uh, others, mm -hmm. you know, I just I just keep buying new ones. I don't know why. Um, but uh, you know, this would be my my research my bread and butter and so i would find these things that i had gathered up over time and as i started to think about now i need to create the shock troops of hell and who's on whose side who's on pinhead side who's on the rebel side if you will um and starting to kind of um build them out uh, then i wanted something more than just simply chatterer and butterball and that sort of thing so yeah. who 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 sounded like something, you know, and then doing a little bit more digging and a little bit more research and then saying, all right, I'm not going to go on a deep dive on Aztec religions here, but yeah, that looks like, that looks like that could be that, or at least what somebody, what an Aztec culture knew of that creature or thing or Cenobite at that point in time. Mm -hmm. Leo, that page right there, uh, up a little bit. I think, but the one that had the, all the orange across it. Yeah, the, the, the full page, buddy. The, the, the yeah. splash so, page. Um, the, the, the splash page. There we go. This one is super important. They're looking into uh, Pinhead's head to see what's going on, and we have the whole mm -hmm. story behind Dimolet and the Knights Templar and how everything ties in together in this, and it's all done oh, God, this is just, it's an amazing story panel. Um, th the way everybody looks into it and then just pinhead down at the very bottom having his say, but mm -hmm. um, how they could see all that in his brain. I just, I, sorry, for those of you who haven't read it yet, do, but this is a very important thing to know about. The Knights Templar are involved in this and Jeremy, but um, I'm going to make him. But, oh, you're uh, going to make me? I'm going to make you. But but this oh, is boy. a very important page, and you really got to check it out. And he did so well with his art. Oh, my God. I, but, sorry I to interrupt. That was just... Geek, was like, geek out on my 
my work. I rarely have read it. This one is one of the few I've reread, and you guys are doing me a treat because I do, I do love these lines. <laughs> Truth, like the divine, can be exquisite in its hurt. I, again, I can't write that. That's just like a, a channeled moment. But um, what I think is interesting about Paul as an artist here too is um, he evokes Doug's face or Pinhead's face without you know mimicking it right sometimes the right. danger i think of movie adaptations again is is there is that you know that that attempt to sort of capture an actor's likeness and then it has that very stilted quality that a lot mm. of uh film tv adaptations of things have and yet this feels so of the character and of doug without it being it at the same time it's very yeah. much its own thing yeah, I, really, really terrific artist. And yeah. and one more thing that I like to point out, and then I'm going to shut up because I feel like I want to give Jeremy and Leo a chance to talk. Um, oh, yeah, they're on the I, show too. I, yeah, they're, they're yeah. <laughs> um, I also love the idea that you that 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 the Cenobites have an armory, like they have uh, somebody right. the weapons. And I was just thinking, I was like, you know what? It, it was kind of like when you have a, a like a, a part of history filled in. That you're mm -hmm. like, you know what? I kind of took that for granted, but that was explained. And I was like, this is a good answer. Like, like you wouldn't think, like, you're like, yo, where did all those chains come from? Like, <laughs> if they had a weapon, where, where would they come from? Like, that's not just magic. Like, someone made that shit. Like, so I'm just mm -hmm. thinking to myself, like, reading, like, we just passed it. And I was just like, yeah, they would have an armory and they would totally have an armorer. So, right. And I'm, I just find yeah. it great how civilized hell is. <laughs> like, it's, it's very, it's very civilized. It's, yeah, it, it, there's it's, so many rules and regulations, and everything's very tight knit. Like P Pinhead keeps a, a, a tight ship. He runs a tight ship. Um, <laughs> but it's interesting, yeah. you know, uh, Drew, what you're saying there, because yeah. I think that this also, you know, not really super consciously, but this. Um, this sort of reflects, I think, something we were talking about last time, which is the process of doing the anthology fueled this book mm -hmm. in a lot of ways because I was able now to lift from newer characters that had been created along the way, like Atkins, who was the you know the armorer, mm -hmm. and other characters that were that were created by other people in other Hellraiser stories, which right. had enriched the Hellraiser universe mostly. I, I did most of the heavy lifting of the Nightbreed stuff. But then I could I could bring them in here for either small or semi significant roles, which you know was the which was what we really wanted to do with the Hellraiser series. Right. We wanted to kind of open the universe up, and I, I think this was a um, no matter who had done this, and I can't right. imagine who else would have done this. Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's that that's the that's the uh, the tribute you know to the world that that we were building because Clive led us, right. And and the last thing I will say is I also enjoyed that this book really kind of I felt restored the the somewhat neutrality of the Cenobites because in the first two movies, you know, you have that that famous line like angels to some demons to others. There's mm -hmm. that kind of ambiguity that then like around, I'd say, the third movie, we just went, they're evil. It's just evil. Right. Right. You know, right. I feel like with your book, you got that sense like we are not what we do can be perceived as evil but you rationalize that we are about order that that yeah. within our evil there is structure mm -hmm. there is purpose and then the the for the night breed we are chaos attempting to find law like midian was law and when midian fell we are anarchy once again because we are without a base we were without an, an anchor we are a floating ship in the night and of course to the Cenobites, this is the the worst thing ever so that's right the, the the fight so but back to the, my point being is i really enjoyed that because i felt like i feel like it's so easy in horror movies like you you have that this is bad you know but with clive and the Cenobites and pinhead and all that you had that 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 there was that interpretation they could be evil to people who don't understand but to some who want their knowledge that they are considered good 
so again it's 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 all about perception you know that 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 clues back into the you know the initial promise of the first movie which mm -hmm. you know certainly has some some flaws to it but i mean is 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 by in a way an, an amazingly original vision and and the thing that always stuck with me from that was um and i don't remember the specific line but i mean you know essentially you know we are agents of experience right we are here to bring you an experience right you know what you are either prepared for or not uh, you know but that's what we're bringing you and how you perceive that experience uh, uh pleasurable painful uh mm -hmm. whatever is up to you and where are you ready where are you on the scale right you know right. and that that sort of thing and and i would just uh, for what it's worth, um, counter, but it's it's your view, so it's totally legitimate, and that's right. how you're interpreting the story. But I don't see, I don't think that Midian was was order and structure so much as just we just want to live, right? The Nightbreed just want to live, and that's sort mm -hmm. of the organic. You know, they're a commune. They're a bunch of hippies. They're a bunch of like Pretty you much. know monstery hippies, and 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 uh, yeah. Archie Goodwin was the you know, I, I believe I said this last Even time, you know, was the one who had the epiphany about um, what's that, George? Jeremy? I was okay. saying you even had uh, what's her name sitting there strumming the the guitar. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, dude, yeah. Stuff. But um, but, you know, he's the one who sort of like said they're the X-Men, right? They're they're They've got extraordinary powers and they and they just kind of want to live. You know, they just want their equal due. Mm -hmm. And instead, they're being persecuted and prosecuted and everything else. And uh and um you know so that to me was the gold ticket early on of like how do we approach this as an ongoing book right and, and so they're they're they just want to live you know strum their guitar um you know avoid eating human meat and uh yep. and just get on that's that's yeah. one of the best okay for all of this i grant you the <laughs> breaking the law and eating the <laughs> just this meat. once just he went, twice. Just twice. He, right, he, went, he didn't even hesitate. He went right in. He oh, was yeah. like, he was like, what? It, it, was, it was a happy meal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was smiling the whole time. Even came with toys. Uh -huh. <laughs> so Leo and Jeremy, if you'd like to talk, please. Oh, I've been talking. Come on. Right, what I'm saying. I feel like I've been <laughs> mean to you. Have do you have any bias in any of this, Dan? Like, who did you know right away how you were going to end it? Um, you mean bias? Like, how is it going to like settle yeah, out? Yeah, like I, I mean, knew, I knew it wasn't or not new, but uh, the ending is very uh, how to put it. Uh, it it fit right very well. It, it was just like a classic kind of like into a movie almost and, oh yeah and it, it did you have that already planned out yeah this thing came to me in the in the whitest heat of whitest heat this was lightning in a bottle i mean i really saw this thing uh fleshed out as you will uh in such a complete way uh, very early on um uh, you know the 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 knights templar stuff took a little bit more work uh to figure out the specifics around that but um but was I there, knew the big, big beats of it really quickly. Was there a reason you used uh, Jock Demolay as the 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 knight? I cannot remember why. I'm sure if I went back in and looked, if I had those notes and research anymore, but it 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 struck me. I, I know I researched it, and but I, I only couldn't tell you why. Right now. As a kid, I was part of a group uh, that was based off of Jock Demolay, and uh, okay. Yeah, uh, it's it, it, as soon as I saw it, I, I was like, "Oh, okay, now I can connect something here." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about these guys with these pins and these weird, you oh know, my moon God. face I, people, but Dan, I, I I'm sitting there, I'm like, he seems like such a refined gentleman. What has he got me reading here? <laughs> <laughs> it gets more and more twisted, but it but really my did. my my bias um was really again just to tell a good story. I mean, I I, I knew that i you know i wasn't going to kill pinhead i was not going to destroy pinhead yeah. i didn't want to i didn't want to do a pinhead versus everybody's story so i had to introduce people worse than pinhead like pinhead was was not a good guy but um uh you know once clive 
charged me with this thing. You know, he was like, so what about that Nightbreed Hellraiser crossover? What do you mean, what about that Nightbreed Hellraiser crossover? What are you talking about? Like, you know, well, the one you're going to write. Um, okay, thank you. Uh, and and then your wheels just start turning. Um, but I, I had affection again for these characters. Um, and I wanted to use Pinhead especially as the representative of that next level of I'm, and I'm not going to try and do my Doug Bradley impersonation, oh. you know, of experience, right? That's, that's, he's, he's the, the face of, and the representation of what hell represents, what hell re represents with that next level of pleasure and pain and, and ecstasy and, and, uh, and, uh, and order. So he has to then have something worse than him to mix things up. And and I and I guess I could have found worse things on the Nightbreed side, but um, once that order discipline friction started to happen, um, you know it really, uh, you know the the title was probably you know three times too intellectual, you know for for its own good, but you know the holy war aspect of it, um, you know predating anything else, you know where that word has become uh, perceived in different ways, uh, you know was was straight on perfect for this right um mm. you know praying won't save you it's a holy war i i love that line on the back of it you know <laughs> i i love when he when alistair first jumps in when they're in the middle of deliverance from the cursed night breed return to ex from exile to test our faith and he's like hey i want to do something about that and he's like it is not your place yet to speak among the laity alistair i can't oh, yeah. do it. i can't do it at all that time will not come for 6,727 oh years, God. three months, five days, 12 hours, <laughs> 22 minutes, 48 seconds. It would seem you're out of order. Yeah. I love that. Like, like, like that was, that was the, the best insulting. And like, again, Pinhead just has, you get, you gave him some good zingers. He just oh, yeah. withers. He just withers. It's kind of frightening that the, the lady of hell there and the, the, you know, the disciple, ship of hell runs better than the u.s congress i think at this point so congress was running at all yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so so so, so, What's this? The, so uh, this is the this is uh his latest kickstarter axles oh okay axles yeah so yeah, you don't have to shift gear to this. You guys can keep on jihad. Oh, you know, I know no, we, we want to touch on this a little bit, especially because we're talking about order and hell. Yeah, and, and I feel it's a nice segue. We want to. Okay. You know, have right. you have you always been such a a, a, a lover of this kind of uh, mythology? I guess. Um, I mean, I was always a big fan of of horror. You know, growing up yeah. and, and all through it. I mean, starting off with more classic horror and then expanding outwards into things and and i am just fascinated by the the mythologies of hell i, I mean i think that came most directly uh as you start to find try to find um uh antagonists you know for stories when i was writing more um horrific stories and you know let's draw from demonology and they don't necessarily have to be demons but they might be your inspiration for it um but then uh certainly the hellraiser work uh took me down um you know some interesting paths uh and a lot of the research uh into that and then as i started on this story many many years ago mm -hmm. um that took me even further down finding obscure books every now and again and then suddenly realize oh geez i've got 20 of these <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know that i'm going to get much more from buying more books at this point so, hmm. You're gonna break so, into your house sometime and steal your library. Yeah. So my, my wife had them had me hide a lot of the books on the upper shelf when my kid was growing up. So. That's fair. So if you had to do like an elevator pitch for Axel's Infernal that you're doing, how what would that be? You know, uh, imagine there's not just one hell, but there's many hells, and there are many hells, right? You've got Aztec hells and Mesopotamian hells and Egyptian hells, and all of these hells want to be believed in, desperately want to be believed in, but some of them have fallen out of favor or about to fall out of favor. Everybody's not as popular as Dante's hell, but the Underworld Transportation Authority is there to solve all that because they will express deliver hell to earth for these different hells by ship or by 
by plane or by truck. And so uh, we follow the adventures of Necros Terminal, who is the dispatcher for the North American territory for the trucking division. And he has different drivers that have to deliver hell uh, from these different hells, have to deliver different damnation to Earth. But they can only use humans to do this for various reasons. And so a young woman named Percy Cross uh, gets hijacked, Shanghai, press gang, uh, seduced into having to become the co-driver of one of these rigs, Smoke and Sammy. So this is sort of her journey to hell and back and then back to hell and then back again in this course of these adventures with a more experienced driver named Virgil Shift. Uh, and so it's a very grindhouse, supernatural thriller, thrill ride in the spirit of a little bit Army of Darkness, a little bit Drag Me to Hell, uh, a little bit Sam Raimi, a little bit Good Place. Uh, not quite an elevator pitch, or maybe we're at the twentieth floor at this point, but uh, it's it's a it's a it's its own thing in that way, and I think pretty uh, exciting. And uh, and the real hell is going through Kickstarter, but that's another thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, and it's to, dead sexy. I wanted to play this. Hopefully, you can hear. It. If you can't, let me know. Um, uh, it looks. It, it's the most beautiful screensaver. No, I think it, I think the no, sound. We can't, but the images are beautiful. Leo. Are you, they are. Oh, you can't hear. It? Now, no. well, well, let let us watch it and imagine the words. In actual. I actually loaded it into the video clips. If you'd like to play it from oh, there. Oh, you're able to grab it. Okay. Yeah. Of course she's I'm I'm all she, over this. She does man. it all. It's ready, man. She she wrangled the squirrels. Into I really a line like the, to I, perform. Oh, I really like the idea that they're all hells are real, all hells are viable. It, it's um, kind of like, it, well, it's it, so much more interesting and rich. And then there's these ones that have, like, you've that have been forgotten totally. You know, oh, that's and, and so in, in this world, like Dante's, you know, Dante's like the strip, not the strip mall. It's like the mall of like hells, right? The Dante's hell, the Christian hell. It's Everybody's got that. They've got the most mojo. But then there's this poor little Babylonian hell that's got like three, you know, <laughs> demons sort of begging for like a space on one of the trucks. Uh, and mm -hmm. and we've blown these stories out over many different storylines. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is the first storyline, uh, which will not reveal everything or every hell. Right. We just have to get, kind of get Percy into this. But the uh, the objective uh, and you know, the goal would be to then get enough sort of mojo behind it that we'd be mm -hmm. able to tell these other stories, both bigger ones and even smaller ones. I've actually written, a, you know, like small eight page stories of just these guys making a very small delivery, you know, here and there. So everything doesn't have to be this big overblown thing. It can just be these little wonderfully twisted vignettes. It, I like that. And then the energy definitely has that like '90s vibe, like. And I think I mentioned last time when you mentioned like Peterbilts and everything, my <laughs> my brain, like my pop culture brain, was like, oh god, because you know, because at that time I was reading a lot of crossover comics, like uh, yeah, Freddy, Freddy versus Jason, uh, Jason versus Jason X, all these things, and I was just like, oh god, Dan. Peter Bill, please don't do a maximum overdrive crossover. <laughs> <laughs> like, that is no, like, no. I was like, that is a hell we don't need to return to. Like, I, I don't know that there's enough cocaine in the world to, to want to do a, a you know, <laughs> like, yeah, I think, I think Stephen King snorted it all up while he was directing that film. And we will try to find um, you more. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I will say, Jar, that, that when we, we had, um, when we were interviewing Dan for the other one through the Owlite Network, which great interview, wonderful. Um, he had this beautiful splash page that I, I think it was like the truck that he described and they're driving on the highway and you just see all these different hells in the background. And it, and it was like, uh, it was like the, the choose your own adventure of your nightmare. Right, 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 right. And I was just like thinking to myself, I was like, Oh dear God. Like, and again, like I, I grew up Catholic, so I, I'm used to the Catholic hell, but through my history major is I've know of other mythologies hells. I'm like, I was like, oh my god, each one works. You're like, holy fucking yeah. hell! No pun intended. Some of them are just, you know, some of them are just weird, desolate places, but they'd still be kind of interesting to sort of visit. You know, mm -hmm. some of them are super sedate. Some of them are are more twisted mm -hmm. than anything 
uh, you know, you could possibly uh, imagine. But mm -hmm. um, uh, and some cultures don't really have much of one. You know, Jewish mm -hmm. culture doesn't really have much of a hell to speak yeah. of. You know, in its, mm -hmm. in its in its own way, which surprised me as I was doing you know the research. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, but I would figure the Jewish faith would have like kind of like the Catholic faith, you know, one of the supreme hells. No, <laughs> no I mean not, not to that degree no. in that way. Yeah, the the, the the hell is in what Yahweh, you know, <laughs> inflicts upon the, the evil doors. You know, <laughs> like that Old Testament wrath. Like good. Oh Lord. yeah. Um, well, but so, speaking but, of evil doers, I'm gonna be one right now, and I'm gonna play this video. This is a uh, short. Yeah, we'll be back in 55 seconds. 55 seconds. Here's what I know. When you've lost your way, it gets easy to lie about the hard truths. My name is Percy Cross, and I've done some sinful things. I'd like to think they were for the right reasons. But the way to hell is paved with good intentions. So if you're going to drive that road, you better be damn sure you pick a good ride. And we have the link to that show us up above or down below, depending on where you're listening to us. If if Splash Pages was like Shark Tank right now, I'd be like, shut up and take my money. <laughs> Here's my money. <laughs> Here's my money. It's fun. I mean, it's it's a it's a. I know it's a ball, and I don't say that about my stuff almost ever. And, and Carl's pulling out the stops, and um, and it's a. Uh, you know, we've lived with this, like I said before, for a long while, uh, in some cases too long a while, but the fact it still holds up and it continues to sort of generate new thinking and, you know, you, you sort of want stories like that to kind of get out in the world. So mm -hmm. uh, Kickstarter is its own beast, as I've discovered, uh, in its own way, and um, I'm learning how to navigate it, but, uh, but we didn't get the... Uh, fund it in 48 hours sort of thing. So now you kind of keep the slog going and, and see where you get to. It's a oh, mysterious uh, beast, the Kickstarter. Yeah. How, like, and same with, like, sharing it, that stuff on Facebook and stuff, like how the algorithm works and how to get people to see it. I have some posts that will be the most mundane thing, get, like, 50 likes on it, and then I'll post something that I'm really trying to push and share and get, like, three views. Oh, yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. what the hell's no, I mean, going uh, on? I, I know from, I mean, I spent 20 odd years working in marketing. So I, you know, I know that you, 3% of the people, you know, will see anything you post, right? You think you have 500 followers and, oh, 500 people are going to see what I post today. No, 3% of those people will see what you post. Yep. So, I mean, it is, um, it's, uh, but there is a big community of people, you know, working on Kickstarter, supporting people on Kickstarter. And I've gotten... Uh, really great tips as I've gone along, uh, you know, if they've kind of come in and they've said, Hey, do it this way or redo that reward and, and, uh, you know, uh, swap this out or put this image up. So uh, I'm continually retooling it and uh, seeing if we can tweak it, you know, a little bit more, get us over um, a finish line. And if we don't get over a finish line, then I have other plans in mind. So we'll, we'll go there. Well, I think, I think Dan also kind of what you're saying is, is kind of what I feel we've seen more of in comic books these days is that while it used to be like the dream was working for the big two, which is, you know, still a really fun mm -hmm. thing to get to do. I feel mm -hmm. like more of the joy is independent comics or, you know, Kickstarter is where the creator owned option where you reap the benefits, but you also, you carry the risk, but you reap the benefits regardless. And we've seen it now where even big names um, in the industry, like uh, mm -hmm. we brought this up on the show, you have a lot of big comic book names are forming their own company. They're ghost machines. Sure. The new, sure. new image comics thing. So I think it's just like you said, like, I, like just rewatching the trailer. Like I just kept thinking like, you know what? I, I miss this. Like I, I enjoy the fun uh, of mm -hmm. comics because I feel now it's just, everything is so repetitive 
and it almost feels like you just you've done it already so it's like what more can you do but you see this and it's just it catches you like that's like the compliments to 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 this project you're working on because i'm like i really i'm like i was like you know what like this is great and guys you know this kind of remind me of um when we were um good boy garrett gunn's project mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. this idea shouldn't work but it's like john wick <laughs> well, because, because for that uh dan that was john wick but it's the reverse so it's the dog oh, i love it getting oh, i revenge. love it and he's in a set no i'm telling you if you get a chance check it out oh, it i definitely will an awesome book it's the dog is the assassin avenging his his owner that's awesome Dude, and it's a nice little cartoon it's it, a cartoon and it's awesome because it's if you've especially watched the john wick movies yeah it's a straight up homage but in the best most ridiculous way so yeah the first comic almost follows the first movie yeah like, straight but, through but so my point fabulous. of that is is just it's that fun where i'm not just like oh they're trying to be the next uh frank miller they're trying to be the next one i was like no they're just mm -hmm. having a ball with a baller story and it's just great and it's like yeah. good good godspeed like go and and that's what every creator wants to do you know in their own way and and have a, a good time telling a story and sharing a story um and and certainly there are tons of tools out there now where you can do it this you know in different ways you, know, mm. you just put it out on your own you could just invest a certain thing and just print it without even doing the kickstarter thing or the crowdfunding thing at all certainly any printing option allows you to produce a book that doesn't look like it's some uh uh you know mimeograph thing or um off the back of a vanity press it's going to look just as good as as anything else mm -hmm. um but it, it is it, it is work right there is that right. additional work and i totally appreciate and respect the idea of just wanting to do the work sometimes i just mm -hmm. want to tell the story want to create the story i'd like somebody else to pick up on this other stuff but in this instance uh, you know, made the decision, you know, with Carl Waller, my partner on this, you know, we talked about, should we, should we take it to publishers? Should we do this? Should we do that? And, you know, various things led us to this decision to, to try it out this way and, and, um, uh, you know, learning things along the way. So that's what you do. So been what... one of the biggest, uh, challenges to overcome right now with Kickstarter um their design thing is pretty awful i mean uh, yeah. laying the page out is 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 surprisingly uh i found kludgy you know I, I know digital software pretty pretty well um i don't know if there's any type of software it's not digital um it's like saying something super <laughs> exciting but um uh it's really kludgy so even going in and updating things and putting in rewards and doing that feels like a slog mm -hmm. i expect it's something a lot more uh elegant uh, in terms of being able to kind of get get stuff in and out, um, ton of spam, which I wasn't expecting. Uh, navigating through a ton of like, you oh, know, I can help oh, you sell everything. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. You know, which is which is hysterical, and and you know, it's just the thing of staying on top of it. It's it's like turning the crank and um, and uh, putting out new posts and and reminding people. And uh, you know, it could easily be a full time job, but it, it cannot be my full time job. I have to juggle that with with other things. Uh -huh. um and then there's that um you know i think like we get entered the therapy you know session part of our program for for a second you know there's that just that weird existential uh, nonsensical dread of like well why isn't it funded yet you, yeah. you know I, i'm right. quote unquote you know i have some name value why didn't it, it 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 kick in right away and and this reason and that reason not that i should be given you know some um you know, some, uh, uh, magic wand, you know, on my shoulder, but I was, I was, uh, maybe I psyched myself out because I did a lot of pre-work on this with a lot of professionals who I respect. And I had them look at it and vet it, look at the page and look at what mm -hmm. they're asking. And, and, you know, um, is it laid out the right way? Is it saying the right things? Are we asking the right amount of money? And they were like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's going to do great. And, uh, and then it's like, oh, well, and I'm hoping it still does do good, but you don't get that immediate thing. And then you're like, okay, am I doing something wrong? And I'm not, I don't think I am. Like, I think I'm yeah. doing everything I possibly can. And it's just the roll of the dice, right? It's yeah. like, what, what happens on this day when 
something terrible happens in the world or somebody else launches something else or people only have so much money you know to go around and and back things so mm -hmm. as i said it's a matter of um uh, uh i'd like it to happen um and uh and i'm i'm hopeful that it will still happen but i'm learning stuff going along the way and the story's still there and the the biggest risk i felt uh frankly was not telling the story and by right. that i mean carl and i had come up with this quite a while ago uh, i think i mentioned this to these guys last time you know we had sort of lost touch and then we kind of got back in touch and and it was almost the first thing that kind of came to both our minds which said to me that this is a story that wants to be told and if we don't do it it's going to go away and it's going to go to somebody else leo's going to tell it next week you know and and he should because mm -hmm. we were too lazy and and you know incompetent to tell it so i want to force it out in the world in one way or the other because i i I feel these characters speaking to me, not with quite the power of the Doug Bradley voice, perhaps, because everyone doesn't have a <laughs> Doug Bradley voice, but you know, they're they're real to me. And they've kind of become very channeled in, especially now. If if we had written if I'd written this story when we originally conceived it years ago, it would have been a very different story, even though it has a very 90s vibe and a grindhouse vibe, and there's lots of action and and so forth. It also has a very, um, I would say, flow of its own, which mm -hmm. I really liked. I really liked discovering this strange pacing of this woman and what she's going through and the things she's discovering and how she's learned to stand up for herself in this totally inhospitable, horrifying situation and and maintaining some sense of real evil and and menace, but also quirkiness and bizarreness and and even humor. I mean, uh, so it's a it's a real different balance than say, jihad, which is just you know off the friggin' leash in terms of of my God, where am I? You know, by page right. four, I'm like, you know, I'm down a rabbit hole of of utter strangeness. And by the end, I'm having editors tell me we're not going to release this book because you went too far. But uh... <laughs> yeah, that was. I, I'm glad that they that you guys fixed. It. You knew going into it though that that was going to be a problem. No, I, think. Yeah, I, I didn't care. No? I just no. Oh, I, thought... I mean, I no. We just we just we just no. We just went in and did it, and um, and we got called in, and we got you know we had to. Greg Wright and I had to um, had to then talk to Carl Potts and explain what we were going to be doing and how we were going to handle it tastefully and and uh and how it was an integral to the story and carl to his credit uh listened and and respected us and respected that we would respect him in time in turn you know that we weren't just going for gristle and shock and yeah and you know and being a bunch of bully boys and saying look what we got away with mm -hmm. um and and i believe we handled it that way you know it's a it's a shocking moment and it's and it's horrible and it's horrifying all the things that it's supposed to be um, but I think it respects the book and the situation and, and, and I hope the readers. So Leo, did you have something you wanted to say before? Yeah. I cut you off. Well, yeah. A couple times there, Jar Jar. I, I know. I, I know. won't hold it against you. <laughs> he, 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 listen, he, you, you hyped him as a master interviewer. So I know, he I know. Uh, now I have to yeah, pull it all together. Yeah. He has, he's got to uh, on that point, Dan. You yeah. Said that, the. uh, <laughs> <laughs> You know <laughs> that the story really wanted to be told. Is it true you you lost the story for a, a moment, like it was on a hard drive and it got wiped or something like that? You mean Axel's Infernal? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It was um, it was um, I had uh, and kids, kids back up your hard drives every night. Um, uh -huh. you know suspenders and and belts. Um, mm -hmm. I had a hard drive crash in two thousand one. And um, and I lost like all my kids' photos from like the first year and a half of his you know life, and I lost almost every single comic thing I had ever written. You know, prior thing like all my whatever scripts, Daredevil, Night Stalkers, mm -hmm. hell, all the stuff I had saved gone, totally wiped. Unless I'd printed it out, which was rare and and in between. And one of those was the the big bulky presentation uh, proposal. For this Axel's Infernal 
at oh that point God. we'd been calling it route 666 so um because i was incredibly clever in those days uh yeah. and then i thought it was just gone and um and then um uh it was yeah, this was sort of like the serendipity like leading into all right do something already uh was i know exactly right mahana <laughs> you know it's um uh and um and then greg wright is my good friend you know called me one day and just said hey i was cleaning up my hard drive and i found this thing do you want it and it was the original proposal which i had sent to him when i'd written it to get his feedback on it and he'd given me some extraordinarily critical scathing feedback making it better but he okay. had both the original one and then the one that i had revised based on his uh on his critique and so i had that as a jumping off point um when i re-engaged with carl which was which frankly was a miracle i mean i remembered fragments of it you know i remembered yeah. like the the the, the gist and, and whatever but uh certainly having that additional tone and feeling and atmosphere and swagger as it were were great to have back uh to be able to then carry it forward to this next next phase of it that that wow. is immediate. yeah now you can go leo yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh so uh it says uh you grew up in connecticut where uh stanford which is where i live now um so i've been in, i grew up in stanford and then moved away uh, different places for a few years mostly in the northeast area and then landed back here a, a while ago at this point but um uh are you in Connecticut, Leo? Or? Uh, yeah, uh, I am. I grew up in uh, Montville. Okay. Uh, which okay. is uh, near Mohegan Sun. Yeah, okay. And, uh, I'm uh, currently uh, near uh, Mystic. I'm over in Groton. Oh, nice. All right. All right. Beautiful area. Really nice. Yeah. yeah definitely. They do, they do some nice Halloween stuff up there. Yeah. They do. Yeah. yeah. A lot A lot of people give, uh, you know, Connecticut a bad rap, but, you know, I like it. Just the drivers. <laughs> just the drivers. So, Dan, just a little thing is that Leo is our gauge for, you know, how you talk, like editors talking about, you went too too hard on the strange. Leo is our gauge for when we go too far and re recommending like a gory or an intense, just a weird book. Mm -hmm. Like I've counted on one hand, the amount of times he'll just start is like, Drew, what the fuck? Like, just, what, 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 why, what, what did you tech have us do? And it's usually, it's like, what he says next is like, if that's a good, what the fuck, like, what the fuck, that was great. Or what the fuck, like, what is wrong with you? Go to therapy. Like, so Leo, when you were reading this. <laughs> yeah, Leo, what was your reaction to this one? Oh my God. It, it, it's, I, I'd have to say like that last scene when, uh, the the person got hung and <laughs> was, there was drippings i was like what the fuck? oh my god <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you create a yeah, man and that's how you do it and uh, that's but, how you do it kids yeah that's but how you it, make a hand of glory it was and, definitely a, a good what the fuck, you know uh okay. your dg uh you know your your writing is fantastic um you know i did go into it I, i'm not a big horror guy Mm -hmm. you know like jar jar uh so yeah. um <clears throat> i saw one of the more recent hellraisers i never saw the original mm -hmm. uh, and i apologize <laughs> I, I, did not watch <laughs> I at least watched the original huh uh, we, uh i think i watched nine was it mm -hmm. oh my god and, wow uh, you went deep yeah. Oh, well, it goes on forever. It goes on like more than Leprechaun, I think. I don't really? know. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Do they go to space? Yeah. Yes, actually, yes, they do. Actually, <laughs> they oh, do. Shit. Yes. And they went to space before Leprechaun. So suck it. Oh, wow. Yeah. And there wasn't any giant Leprechaun, but there was a laser. So they did, they did laser in space. So, but yeah, they went to space, man. This is before Jason ever went or Leprechaun. So, Trailblazers. Hellraiser did it first. Yeah, Hellblazer. Boom. <laughs> you know, God, I gotta stop creating these puns. Um, I think and, uh, Leo, it's it's no. Go ahead, please. Oh, oh no, go for it. Go for it. No, 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 that's fine. No, I was just gonna say, um, you know, it's it's really easy, and I've made the mistake not in this context, I don't think, but I mean, I think you know when you introduce really. I think I did it more in like 
a book called Night Stalkers, you, you know, um, which was like a horror book in the Marvel universe. But um, yeah, Carrie knows. I think you. Um, it's really easy to introduce weird elements, right? You know, like Hands of Glory and people hanging themselves to, you're reaching up into other people and stuff, mm -hmm. and just have it, um, just become awfulness right look how far i'm pushing it i'm trying to kind of offend the audience i'm trying to i'm trying to show what i can get away with um or or show that i read you know some dark tome and you know saved all the nasty bits for myself um and uh, i think i was fortunate in being able to to weave a fine line of of going into this world and then keeping these characters by and large the most important part of it I mean, the, the Nightbreed, I think, are are gloriously warm characters, you, you know, and mm -hmm. I think that that helps in the in the aspect of it for me anyway. So maybe that mm -hmm. made it tolerable, more tolerable for you in those WTF moments. Yeah, 100 <laughs> yeah, percent. But Dan, should you have on the show, we're going to talk about Leo's childhood because there is definitely a horror movie waiting to be made, but we're not going to get into that. Because we're trying to wrap up, so um, but so the question I have is before you go is that uh, essentially, I guess write yourself off as in what is the best way people can reach you, uh, things you're working on, that kind of deal, and uh, I don't know anything else you want to add before uh, you know. Sure, sure. No, I mean again, I appreciate you guys having me on. This is a, a, a personal favorite, you know, something I've always held in high regard and was really happy to accomplish. Um, especially since um, I didn't think it would be able to work. And and I, I remember watching a podcast years ago where, you know, sometimes you Google yourself and it comes up and and I watched this guy's horror podcast and his basically whole tenet was, there's no way this is going to work. <laughs> he's like reading it like in real time. And then by the end of oh, it, no he's like, kidding. wow, that really worked. Um, so um, I, I was really pleased to kind of re return to this this world, um, uh, you know, with you you folks. And, um, and I think, um, I mean, as a, as a sign off, you know, people can follow me on what's left of Twitter, you know, I'm there is DG Chichester, um, uh, certainly the bit.ly slash Axel's Infernal for the next couple of weeks. Uh, please check that out if you can. Uh, there's a, a, a newsletter, a story .substack Those are all pretty good places to kind of track me or get in touch with me. And uh -huh. uh, in terms of other things that uh, are coming up uh, with a definitive space uh, would be uh, another type of Daredevil, which is Daredevil, uh, the superhero. So there's a mini series called Black Armor, which takes the character back into a uh, almost forgotten, uh, some, some say iconic, uh, uh, more armored version of his costume and a kind of a retro spin with a very 90s feel and it kind of takes place in daredevil's past back in the era when i was writing it which is a four issue series and looks and i think reads uh really great it's got a, a ton of fierce yeah. adventure i'm paired with an incredible artist named netha diaz and um if you liked what i was doing then uh and uh even if you didn't and you just like daredevil and you want to get a real kick out of a pretty ripping adventure um i think uh, people will will find their their money's worth starting on November 22nd. Do we get exactly. any spoilers? A meow is exactly how I would say it. Yep. <laughs> any spoilers for that, uh, Daredevil? Any, uh, who's our huh? bat? Um, well, uh, uh, there's a, there's some good saber tooth action. There's some good hobgoblin action. They've, uh, oh, they're cool. showing up. There's, uh, you know, a couple of uh, uh, other folks we haven't revealed yet. Uh, but there's, cool. um, uh, go ahead. No, cool. No, no, yeah. I, I, nothing to say. <laughs> Commenting like Getting more. Of, yeah, more of giving Dan money. Got, got it. <laughs> support, support friends of the show. So, yes. Well, make sure to check out the Kickstarter, everybody. It looks yeah, please amazing. check it out. I, I, I'm going to be helping out. I hope everybody. Lots of me. lots of great rewards. Lots of great <laughs> variants and stickers and. and stuff or just get the book you know that's good. but as, as we wrap 
as we're wrapping up, Dan, thank you so much. But please, no tears. That's a waste of good suffering. So, <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, yes. You know, it's thank Jesus, you. I, I, Jesus I'm wept, done. and that's it. You know, I, I'm done. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Just sign off already. Uh, but before you go, uh, we do yeah. have, uh, uh, we do manage a fairly large um, horror community. So I made sure we shared it there. So, uh, awesome. You know, oh, hopefully you. We'll, we'll give you some boost there. I've been sharing it in my comic group as well, trying to. Thank you, guys. I, 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 really I, I like it. to get the comic. I, I, anything that I find that's worth getting made, like it, it's definitely worth getting made. We're stirring. So. We're stirring the nerds up for you, Dan. Don't yeah, worry, we got you. It's it's the way it it happens. You know, you got to get people aware of it, and then it stands on its own merits. And I think it will. Don't, don't worry. If you're at Terrific yeah. Con next year, we're going to try to get you a line, my man. For at least fifteen <laughs> minutes. <laughs> well, I've had I've had good you know good uh, stretches of traffic and then and then, uh, and then, yeah. and then nothing happens you know but and then somebody even, comes by and says you're Doctor Chichester you know that's always fun when they see the DG and. <laughs> Well, I want to remind everybody you can uh, follow DG. Uh, all the information is shown us up above or down below, uh, depending on where you're watching or listening to us. And uh, before we let you go, uh, you know, just so I can dork out a little bit, uh, mm -hmm. you mentioned uh, you've been in uh, marketing for 30 years. Uh, yeah, about um, since about 90, 99. So, you know, not quite uh, full, but it seems from. like 30 years. Yeah. Oh. I only ask. I, I'm in digital marketing myself, and uh, um, ah, okay, yeah. So, were you uh, working on your own, or for a for a organization, or what were you doing? Uh, I work for a uh, um, uh, uh, insurance company. Okay, uh, and uh, I was doing uh, marketing technology, and they mm -hmm. just moved me to uh, um, paid ads. So, uh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. fun stuff. Yeah, no, I was on uh, staff for a long time for um, Ogilvy and, and Mather and then uh, TVWA and uh, played different creative director, writer, chief this, chief that, you know, roles uh, across time, mostly in, in digital uh, advertising. But, uh, you know, once you hit a certain point, I feel you, you just can do anything. So that's the way I sort of look at it. Yeah, well, you got to learn it all, you know. It's, yeah, yeah, you never know where you're going to get thrown. Yeah, you know? no, no, and it's and it's um, it's it actually taught me a lot of uh, discipline. So, uh, which uh, certain aspects of my style and approach to things uh, certainly needed it. So, I feel I'm much better uh, positioned to approach things like these projects uh, today because of that. Very cool. Well, okay. I sent you a connect request on uh, LinkedIn, and uh, excellent. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, I, thought that that was, I thought you were going to ask him what he collects. I was just like, oh, we're going to finally find out if Dan collects anything. <laughs> Damn you, Leo. What, what, what was the over? You, you can ask that question. Uh, yeah. Leo usually asks all the guests, uh, you know, what it is that they nerd out about or if they collect anything. Like, oh, uh, man. Over the like, years, I've collected so many things and, you know, if I could find every now and again, I found like an old bag of like, you know, receipts and like you realize how much money I burned through at Toys R Us and KB Toys and, and stuff. And you're on and the for, right show. Yeah. Yes. You know, <laughs> I, I feel most of the stuff got cycled out over time. Yes. Uh, there was there's a ton of Looney Tunes figures that I, I treasured forever and a day. I still have some of these great glasses, which I, I cannot part way with. Um, and um, but, you know, there's still some great. Um, old james bond toys like up on the shelves up there the, the the thing is like my wife took over like this half of the office space which you know she's certainly welcome to so all the cool stuff is kind of like over here that i i face so there's really nothing you know behind me in that way um most days nowadays i i i uh i probably geek out more crashing drones you know that's sort of like my my uh i i uh i work up my stress and get rid of my stress doing that when i can get work up the stress because i realize oh it's not coming back and it's <laughs> heading for that body of water and that's you know uh, uh dji uh yeah 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 i got it. do you do you fly them as well no 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 i've been looking at them and trying to convince the wife that we need one and uh yeah you definitely need them. <laughs> you've got a the roof um inspections are good a good way to kind of get in on it you know like kind of like you know we need to look at the roof and see if we need to get it repaired and you know and then we could do it for you know grandma or the in-laws as well so 
you know, that's that's, a, that's a good in. Yeah, nice. Right. Looking for snakes. Yeah, exactly. No, you know. no, no, we're not doing this. Mm -hmm. We've been good the whole. So, sorry, Dan. We've been good the whole show, Carrie. We're not saying the S word. <laughs> sorry. Don't. Why did it have to be snakes? Uh, yeah. Well, it, it. I. I. No. Old, far, well, just so he knows, the old farmhouse I grew up oh. in had a snake infestation problem. Ah, so, all right. Yeah. All right. I, I was killing about a dozen snakes this summer that were in the house. So, uh, Ooh, okay. Story, right. These were like, these were like six foot freaking long snakes. Like real snakes, not oh, like yeah. little, oh, yeah. tiny little garter things. I mean, no, uh, no, this, no, no, snake killer over there. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. And he's like, oh, he's so no. nonchalant about it, Dan. He's like, oh, yeah, this is my childhood and everything. I was like, Leo, Leo, this is not normal. You're talking He's about just... killing copperheads before you had your coffee, like right, 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 fuck, right. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. You do, you do acclimate yourself though, right after a point. So you're like, ah, oh, just got to kill a bunch of snakes this morning, and then kind of mm. move on. Yeah, yeah. Yep. 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 Zip. That's that's him. So no, next time, Leo. Yep. We're already next time. Next time. <laughs> okay. so, well, that was my bad. Uh, we'll like let you go, DG. Uh, thank you so much, and. Uh, um, like Carrie said, I think if you hit leave studio, it should give you the link. But if you don't get it, we'll send it over to you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it'll do the upload thing and I'll just leave it running, you know, for, um, you know, for, uh, until it, it, uh, it says I can go away. Right. So, Perfect. yeah. Um, all right, guys, thank you again. And this is in the, in the boxes are getting very close to being solved, which is always my cue to, to leave <laughs> and uh, <laughs> take it easy. Well, and happy Halloween to everybody. Thank well. you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Much appreciate it. Glad to have you again. It was an honor. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and then there that was were a lot four. of fun. Uh, oh, we man. almost got him out of here in an hour, and then we all had to talk to him. And then, <laughs> and then someone had to bring up fucking. Hey, Mahana. Hey, Mahana. <laughs> Thank, thanks for thanks for contributing, girl, with the sad. Oh my. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, we know. Um, <laughs> we, we're aware. We, <laughs> so we're your second convoy friend. Um, like, she's just making, she's just. Uh, All my you, convoy you, friends are married. I think you're forgetting that aspect. <laughs> listen, fantasy ha holds no limits. Okay. It is whatever you can imagine. Ooh. <laughs> Boom. Uh, well, be before we get into the news, uh, let's just take a couple minutes for our banter because I know we didn't get a chance to do that. I uh, say anything tonight. A lot I, of know, I know. I know. I just want to say uh, I'm playing Spider Man 2. Nice. Uh, absolutely loving it. It's amazing. Uh, amazing Spider Man. Get it? Get it. Uh, yeah. Play on words. Leo <laughs> did it. <laughs> Uh, it's very unique. You uh, you switch mid game constantly between uh, Miles and Peter. Oh, nice! Yeah. What uh, big bads have you fought so far? Uh, no, actually, the uh, no, no, uh, Sandman. You start off fighting Sandman. Okay. Uh, matter of fact, that's one of the things. Is there's some crystal that's like linked to his psyche. And they're scattered throughout the um, the city, so you have to fight little Sandmen, you know, all over the place. Um, and then uh, Craven's team. Uh, so Craven has like uh, some team of uh, like killers that you know. There was a big battle in the uh, in the river. Craven. Uh, yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, totally recommend it. You know. Very nice. Uh, that and Mario. So uh, yeah, I, I saw your post the other day. It's the best Mario game ever. Oh my god, so friggin' awesome! Yeah, it's so animated. There's like one level where uh, the uh, the piranha plants are singing. It's a parade. <laughs> oh, it's adorable. They're they're yeah, friggin' adorable. <laughs> Very cool. That just sounds yeah. Yeah. I haven't played a Mario game since Galaxy. I think it was. Yeah, well, this is uh, 2D. It's more of a um, Ooh, it's more of, more of a se very uh, sequelish to Super Mario World. Okay. Yeah. So more on that aspect. 
That's like when I was able to still play. I never owned it, but I had friends who did. That that was that was the one with Yoshi, right? Yes. Yep. Cause the kid, yeah, because my friend would like we'd be we were all messed up one night and we were playing and we'd be like hop, he hop Mario hops off and he's like bye bye have fun in the castle have fun in the castle and then as soon as he get he'd be like I hope you die I hope you die you keep force feeding me you me spit everything up you're a terrible owner I hope you die and then it would start and then he'd just be like laughing hysterically and die because my God dear God you starting a game off with immediate guilt trip what is your mother playing <laughs> like. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I, I, that was just I, one of my friends who said, you know. I, I, I don't. Re- I don't really have much. Although apparently, apparently, I look good in purple. It's the only banter I have. Is uh, apparently wearing a purple suit is is fashionable. So I'm like, oh sweet, I already have this. So okay. I will say it's also funny. I went to a Halloween costume that um, Sunday, and I was Rod Serling from the Twilight Zone, and I would just occasionally go into monologues, just, you know, just sitting there, just a fake cigarette, just leave if you will. Welcome to Splash Pages, a place full of wonder, full of nerdery, full of a lot of weird shit. My God. You know, just, and I can't, we kept doing it. And, and I was just there before, I was like, my God, this is exhausting. How did this man do this for years? <laughs> you got know? paid to do it. That's what it was. But, um, but I did, and I will get, and I will send the photos later. I decided what my second costume is going because I'm going to a separate party this weekend uh, for for my girlfriend's relatives. I'm finally going to do Matt Foley from SNL and Chris Farley's uh, Van, Van Down, Down by, by the, the River. river. Yep. yep. And I am so pumped because I've wanted to do that for so long, and I'm like, let's live YOLO as you the got the suit. Woman. I, I need the jacket. That's all I need. I got everything else. I just need the jacket. And just, just I'm just going to probably just ha- I'll take a big nap and just be so energized so I could just walk in. Well, Lodgy freaking da. Welcome to Splash Pages. There's Leo. There's Jeremy. There's Leo. There's Jeremy. And Gary. Okay. Are you going to work in a joke where uh, living in a van down the river is actually an upgrade now? Yes. Well, every day, but um, you know what? Other banter we could do is when we're doing the news. There we go. Oh, do we got... the news before and, we and do. Oh, oh yeah. uh, before we do, uh, 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 the logo, uh, not the logo. Um, I'm okay. out of it right now. Uh, the intro. Any any uh, yeah, okay. thoughts? Changes? I really did. Perfect. Bring a tear to my eye. Okay. I I, I, was, like, I was like... chuckling the whole time. Yeah, I yeah, started I off it, grooving yeah. and like it, it was great. Okay. Yeah, it was it was really it was nice, concise, it had the nice amount of energy and whatnot. But what we really want to know is what the fans think. Please comment below. Tell us. And and I'll, I'll, I'll load it separately so you can get a chance in a van to get down by the river. <laughs> uh, Tom Dog will be uh, reading Super Mario Wonder this Thursday. Go check him out over on Real Pro. There you go. On YouTube. Yeah. Subscribe, like, then you'll let us know when you get to go see him again. I, I like how I, I feel like every show, it's going to always be, hey, let's try to keep this as tight as possible. And then two yeah. hours later. All right. <laughs> News <laughs> item number <laughs> seven. All right. So we're just hitting the ground running. News. <laughs> Phew. DC. Okay, so this is one of my news stories. This is DC uh, announcing uh, this year for 2024 uh, their DC um, <clears throat> their power anthology. So this was a successful anthology that they did last year, 2023. That ended up getting a second printing after overwhelming praise from both critics and fans. So this is a 104 page anthology spotlighting. DC's uh, African American superheroes. So this is going to be released January thirtieth, twenty twenty four. The main cover is going to be by Chase Conley. You're going to have variant covers by Jamal Campbell, um, and by um, um, famous artist and Mile Milestone Media co-founder Denise Cohen, who we unfortunately didn't get to interview when he was at Terrific Con this year. Hopefully he'll be back next year. So. 
The stories being is we're going to see a new Far Sector story by writer uh, N.K. Jemsen and Jamal Campbell, which is an epilogue to the Young Animal series where we're going to see Far Sector's Green Lantern, uh, Sojourner, Joe Mullen, finally meet with Green Lantern, John Stewart. So we're also going to get stories by The Signal, The Spectre, that's when he was Crispus Allen, not when he was Hal Jordan, Thunder and Lightning, which as we know is Black Lightning's super-powered kids, Bloodwind, uh, who would everyone remember from his oddly forgettable time as part of the Justice League? Uh, Jeremy, that's the team that Doomsday tore through like tissue paper in the death ah. of Superman. Ah, yes. uh, Valzon, <clears throat> who was the Superman of Earth 2. Yeah. Uh, Nubia, who is a slightly newer character uh, created by Brian Michael Bendis, uh, and more. Uh, so we're going to see a lot of talented writers John Ridley, Brandon Thomas. Sean Martinborough, Cheryl Lynn Eaton, uh, Aletha Martinez, and then um, Joel Campbell, Edmund Gallman, Carrie Randolph, Denise Cohen, Tony Atkins, uh, Isaiah Fulmore, and more. January 30th, 2024. This looks awesome. I'm super pumped for great in or anthologies with great characters. And hey, listen, uh, I'm down for good DC comics. So it looks pretty great, not going to lie. Awesome. Yep, yep. Uh, next up, uh, looks like Jar Jar Cable. Oh, the return of Cable. Okay. You guys want the long or the short? Because the long's not too bad. I've gotten it down, though. I'm going to do the long. All right, buddy. Go for it. Go long. We are in the midst of a battle to protect Krakoa. This epic struggle will be narrated through two intertwined comic series, namely Fall of the House of X and Rise of the Powers of X. Additionally, there will be supplementary stories in various X series, along with the introduction of a new series called Cable, written by Fabian Nicieza and illustrated by Scott Eden. Set to debut in January, Cable follows the adventures of one of Mutantine's most formidable warriors. Mm -hmm. He is on a mission to confront Orcus and a fresh threat known as, correct me if I'm wrong on this, Neocracy? Yes, Neocracy. Neocracy? Yeah, let's go okay. with that. In this critical undertaking, he, he'll join forces with someone he can trust. Himself, the younger version of Cable, is making a comeback as both versions race to prevent a disastrous future from becoming a reality. The series makes <clears throat> the series marks a significant return for Fabian, who is well known for his contributions to Cable's character development during the 1990s and X-Force and Cable's solo exploits as well as the popular Cable and Deadpool series in the 2000s. Yes. Nicieza expressed his excitement, stating, it's always a delight to write Cable and, a challenge, and challenge him with intense physical and emotional conflicts. Given my extensive history with the character, it's also enjoyable to contribute to his storyline. Mm -hmm. The storyline emphasizes the urgency of preventing a bleak future from unfolding. The neocracy is on the horizon, and its arrival threatens not only mutant kind, but all of humanity as well. In addition to rescuing young Nate from Orcus, Cable must confront this looming menace and eradicate it before the neocracy can take root. Is he already too late to alter the course of the future? Ba -ba -ba, by the book. Huh? Huh? Nicely, nicely done, Jar. Well done. Um, Fabian is always great. He writes... He's basically written cable so much i could feel like he could be considered the godfather of yeah. cable stories um and young cable being a new thing i think it's gonna be interesting seeing old cable fighting young cable fighting alongside young cable especially because at one point one was dead but the other one was existing which is just another reason why we really got to watch time travel and not just <laughs> You know, just say, ah, fuck it, whatever. It happens, you know. But if you're the young me, why don't I remember telling you this? Mm. Mm. I'm old. You know, I got the glowing eye and metal arm, and a lot's been going on. I've got, I've got a lot of stuff. But, um, lots has happened. Yeah, exactly. So, okay. Hey, cable. Cable's back. All right. Yeah. Monday. Is that people didn't go to streaming? Yep. Uh, Leo, next to story, please. You and your get friend. out. 
<laughs> what? That was so bad. I let Jeremy say my catch line. <laughs> Cut it out. Oh, I love it. But I wonder whose story this could be. Mm, okay. I wonder. So this one is really quick. Uh, this year on November 22nd, it will be local comic comic shop day. And um, so everybody go out to your local comic shops. Uh, there are going to be some free comics out there that you can get your hands on. And uh, this particular cover, it's two covers that are put together. Um, the connecting variant covers uh, for Universal Monsters Dracula number one. It's published by Image Comics Skybound. And the cover art is by Jason Sean Alexander, who has worked on many horror projects over the years at Dark Horse, Warner Brothers, DC, Hasbro, White Wolf, and some other places. So you can try it. it the interesting thing is going to be, can you get both covers at one shop or do you need to go to multiple local comic book shops in order to get that? Because we don't I know how many it. they're sending out. I love so. a good gimmick. Hmm. Connecting covers gets me. It, especially, yeah. especially Carrie, like this particular version of Dracula, or this story is being written by uh, one of our favorite writers, um, Mr. Something is Killing the Children, James Tynion um, the fourth, is writing the story. And the part of Skybound is that they're turning up a universal project, products and experiences, and bringing these classic characters back to life. So I don't know if this is the first one or if this is the first in a series, but you know, a well-written Dracula, I mean, there's no way it can be worse than Dracula 2000, right? Yeah, we can hope. Yeah. yeah hopefully, well, it says I don't it's, think uh, anything's that bad. It was yeah. Universal Monsters Dracula number one, so maybe there'll be a bunch of different Universal yeah, Monsters. Be, I want to go to this one. Awesome. Okay. I'd be very much into that. What was that, Jojo? Uh, my favorite is Frankenstein out of the Universal Monsters. I like the little Blue Lagoon, or uh, not Blue Lagoon. <laughs> Creature from the Black Lagoon. Black Lagoon, yeah. That would have been Blue a Lagoon. totally different movie. <laughs> a totally different movie. <laughs> I've got you. <laughs> I swim for you. The Blue Lagoon, everyone. Stay tuned. Creature uh, from the Blue Lagoon. Uh-huh. Next. Oh, this is one of mine. So... Uh, in Scarlet Witch, uh, which unfortunately, despite a lot of critical claim, is winding down. So in the penultimate issue, Scarlet Witch issue nine by Steve Orlando, Sarah Pacelli, and a bunch of the other creators, uh, we see a, lot, a day in the life of Wanda Maximoff. And some one of those wide adventures that, you know, this uh, famous Avenger goes on. And in addition to fighting monsters with uh, other mystical um, Adventurers like Jennifer Kale and Man Thing, and even helping her niece Luna stop a bit of what's called mystical gentrification. She is seen fighting alongside Sarah Rogers, aka Cru the hero crusader from Earth 9811. So, uh, for those who don't know what that is, uh, that Earth was created by Jay Ferber and Greg Schimmel and made its debut in 1998's What If issue 114. Now, that was an alternate ending of the original Secret Wars, where unlike the original Secret Wars, where the heroes and villains who were trapped on Battle World went home, this one imagined ones where they were unable to do so. So they stayed on that world um, and decided to raise families. So this and that allows a new number of heroes to emerge as a new generation. And this one being Sarah, who is the daughter of X-Men's Rogue, and Captain America. Hmm. So, wow. Yeah, Rogue I was like Captain America, huh? Yeah, I was like, wow, what a what a That's what a, a wonderful what a wonderful cameo, especially since we haven't seen this alternate earth in I believe decades was the yeah, that I understood. So, you you got to love it when when series do little cute nods like that because they really do help keep the the spirit alive for certain universes. So, so, a little fun fact there, in case anyone's reading that Scarlet Witch series. Stuff like that makes me always want to go back and get the original to be like, yeah, this is where it all first began. 
<laughs> yes, because you need more long boxes in that attic. Yes, yes. Yeah. I kind of always imagined one day you'd, you'd just be able to locate one, like uh, Raiders. You know, you got the, the <laughs> light from your attic. Oh, okay, there, there's my Fantastic Force. <laughs> All right. All right, so, that, so that's currently out. So if you like that, check that story out. Vibe. Next. Uh, Very nice. Would that be uh, the staff of Jar Jar? Yes. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, smoke three blunts for the, the the god, the hemp god to which you praise. Um, he, all right. he comes uh, with rolling hands and holding hands and smoking hands. Screw that. I now have a machine. <laughs> <laughs> I got old man hands. Uh, all right. All right, old man hands. What's so, next on the news? So I have to say I was utterly confused when uh reading the information on this so star wars Ooh. announces mace window django fett series right and as i read that i thought it was a series with mace window and django fett and i thought <laughs> God, that must be so awkward like hey i i beheaded you you know it, <laughs> it, it, <laughs> pages upon pages of so uh it's a buddy comic. You know. <laughs> uh, one had his head at cash. The other one uh, uh, lost right. his arm. Yeah. So then, then upon reading further, you realize the announcement of two completely independent series in the same universe. Actually, a bunch of different know. series. So uh, Star Wars or Marvel is uh, they're removing a series right now. Bounty Hunters is coming to a close. Yeah. Uh, so in return of removing one series of course they need to add half a dozen more uh so bounty hunters is uh is going to be a new prequel series okay and it's, it's written by mark bernard and it was announced at new york comic-con okay uh, so that name may sound familiar he's the kevin smith's co-host from fat man beyond okay he's, he's also uh written for castle rock masters universe revelation treadstone Oh. And he was also listed as a producer for uh, the recent uh, um, Picard series. Okay. Um, so uh, we don't know the actual story of these yet. We just know that it's going to be a uh, new series uh, for um, uh, uh, Mace Windu. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the one that Mark Bernard is writing. Right. The, I uh, hope he comes back. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so too. You know, he, he, well, he, I, I, I'm that dork. You know, I believe it. If you don't see them actually die, then they may still be alive. That's yeah. that. That's that's fair point, Jar. That's mm -hmm. a fair point. Um, yeah. And then correct me if I'm wrong, Leo, but this is the second Mace Windu series, right? We yes. had one in 2017 that was by Matthew Owens and Denise Cohen that had the subtitle Jedi of the Republic. Because Mace Windu is just not doesn't pop enough. We got to have a subtitle. Yeah, I can't yeah. keep up with the Star Wars series because they got way too many of them going. Ne on. Neither can I. But I, I will say I did hear that the Django Fett series that's um, launching in March by writer Ethan Sachs does have a Lenel U cover, and I heard that's pretty boss. Awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't know who the actual artist will be, but the Lenin U is. Uh, one of their covers was shown at New York Comic Con as well. Of also, also listed is uh, Thrawn Alliances mm -hmm. is being adapted to a comic book. So the oh, cool. Timothy Zahn uh, book series. And if you're uh, unfamiliar, uh, Timothy Zahn wrote, uh, it, you must Everything. know his books. Yeah. If, if like, you know, it's all legacy stuff now. It's not part of the yeah. actual canon. Although uh, they're slowly bringing bits and pieces of it into canon. Oh, yeah, because we have Thrawn now in uh, yeah. in the Star Wars universe. Uh, but if you want to dig a little deeper and you don't want to read, you know, his Heir to the Empire books. Uh, so Heir to the Empire, Dark Force Rising, and Last Command. Uh, they released those in a graphic novel form in 2009. So okay. I wanted to pick those up before Thrawn Alliances comes out. You know, that uh, may be beneficial for you to do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and actually, yeah, here's the Django Fett cover. Yeah, that is really nice. Well, yeah. but nice Beskar. 
Um, I mean, again, Len you I, I mean, come on. Even if he's half acting, I, still gonna look good. Yeah. I, he I used think to become that, one of my favorites. Like, I was gonna say, I think Carrie, he's become like your your new Jim Lee. Carrie's a collector, <laughs> collector of the 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 artists and writers. She has a, yeah, she has like a little Pinterest in her mind. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, I like you. You you do good. You, you, yeah. All right. Well, hey, more Star Wars. Like we don't have enough. Yeah. Never enough. Uh, well, you know, never enough is uh, what we're getting now with uh, some facsimile editions. Carrie. Oh yes, dear lord. Oh, that's cool. Um. It has been 40 years since the epic crossover event Marvel's Secret Wars was launched. And to celebrate, Marvel's going to go ahead and reprint them in facsimile forms uh, down to the ads starting in January. There will also be a ton of variant covers, including foils, which we do not have here because they have not released yet, so we don't have to look at them all. Um, foil covers? <laughs> what? Oh yeah, there's gonna be foil, there's gonna be variants. Everybody who can possibly get their arm in this is gonna do whatever they can <laughs> to get. We're gonna have Frank Miller event. You know, we're gonna have everybody. Um, oh god. Oh no Frank uh, Miller, please. <laughs> no. So Secret That's Wars right. is also where we first saw Spidey in his black costume, which turned out uh -huh. to be spoiler alert, Venom. And yeah. so that premiered in Amazing Spider-Man number 252. And because mm -hmm. they just really like making events, Marvel is also going to be releasing facts and leaves of it and the rest of the Amazing Spider-Man issues that followed it that year, along with the facts and leaves of the Secret Wars each month. Uh, the first issue of Secret Wars is going to hit the shelves on January 3rd. Well, Spidey 252 comes out on January 31st. Okay, I need to say this. I didn't know what facsimile meant until they oh. started releasing these, and now I'm over it. It's a reprint. No, I, no I, I, I get but I didn't know what that meant. Oh, and now you, I'm like, oh you youngster. You youngster. Yeah, and now I'm like, facsimile, no. Facsimile. Facsimile. Yeah. yeah. Where are we yeah. the fax machine from? Yeah. Hey, cool. Leo, you want to know another fact? <laughs> Neck. Jeez. <laughs> 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 This is also made. Uh, so because, of course, cool. DC has a book celebrating uh, Black History Month, Marvel Voices Legend Issue 1 will basically be ar uh, arriving um, on Wednesday, January 31st. It's the latest entry in Marvel's voice series. So you have an all-star amount of people. Uh, David F. Walker, Ezra Clayton Daniels, Justina Ireland. Uh, Edder Messia, Sean Damian Hill, among others. So amongst the stories you see there, we have a story about Elijah Bradley by uh, basically in facing down the, of course, iconic uh, villain Crossbones. He has to explore his own family legacy and remind himself of his own destiny to save the day. Uh, Misty Knight celebrates her 50th anniversary at Marvel with the Daughters of the Dragon reunion. Um, so essentially reuniting Misty Knight with Colleen Wing, and then um, Ezra Daniels, who, uh, for uh, those who don't know his work, Doom Patrol, uh, makes his Marvel debut with a Deathlock story. Mm -hmm. So essentially, it looks like Deathlock meets Robocop. So he's always tried doing good with his Deathlock. Now he's broken beyond repair. So in order to continue the fight, he's forced to make a game-changing decision. So they're going to reveal other stories and writers and artists at a later time. But this book is coming out uh, January 31st, 2024. Um, I have to say, I've read some of this. I'm not as hyped for this as I am for the DC one. Mm. Just That's just my two cents. I'm sure these stories are just as good. Um, I don't know. I feel like I was a little bit more hyped for the DC one. The, I don't know. The DC one did grab my attention a lot more yeah uh, it looks like they're putting more effort into it yeah yeah so this is kind of this is kind of, i feel like this is continuing that thing marvel does where we have a popular character cool we're gonna do the same character but it's not yeah. there's a green arrow and hawkeye all over again <laughs> yeah but hopefully with more that's revealed our interest will be peaked a little bit more so 
January 31st, everybody. A lot of books. Next. Lot of I'm sorry. I was muted and I was trying to say something. <laughs> uh, I was going to be a smart ass and I was going to say, hey, Drew, so you mean Marvel's making a facsimile of a character? Oh. And you know what I'm going to say to that? Get out and next. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey, Jar Jar, you got some spawns? Oh, uh, it's for me, yeah. A century after the iconic debut of Todd McFarlane's Spawn and Spawn Number no. One, fans can anticipate an exciting transformation for the character in the upcoming series called Rat City, which was revealed at New York Comic Con last weekend. Mm -hmm. Building upon a storyline introduced in Spawn issue 301, this narrative introduces a fresh iteration of Spawn, symbolizing a new era in the character's legacy. This cool. transformation is significant both in terms of the character's evolution and the comic's impressive milestone as it approaches its 350th issue and journeys towards the monumental Spawn issue 400. Okay. This latest series will introduce a brand new Spawn, yet the character will maintain a direct connection to the legendary Al Simmons. Oh. As per Image Comics, Rat City delves into the story of Peter Karn, an ex-soldier from 2092 who, unlike Al Simmons, is not dead. Peter's status as a hellspawn emerges from a unique source, the nanites within his prosthetic legs. These nanites were influenced by Al Simmons' necroplasmic detonation in Spawn 301, with Al unaware that the uh, repercussions of his actions would extend through space and time. Rat City is penned by Erica Schultz, which... She is the first woman to write a title in the Spawn series, and it boasts the artwork of Zay Carlos. And that's my story, and I'm sticking mm -hmm. to it. Uh, so basically, Jar Jar, this is Spawn 2099. You yeah, pretty much. You stole my joke. You stole it. <laughs> <laughs> Get Don't wait better until this writer. podcast is over. It, it is exactly Spider Man 2099. I mean, I got to say, as a Spawn fan who's been checked out for a while, I'm going to check this out because that looks great and the series. Well, you know, they're supposed to be also doing a lot uh, more with Spawn coming uh -huh. up. Uh, yeah. A lot more series and stuff. Yeah, I think they yeah. just announced a Gunslinger Spawn book as well because King Spawn yeah. has been doing really well. Scorched, like a lot. Spawn has basically been a huge uptick. With it, I mean, I don't know. I know people are still buying it because they're still pumping out Spawn. Oh, yeah. I, I, I have not. I don't think I've picked one up since two fifty was mine. Yeah, same. Like two fifty, two seventy five. That was my last. I, I did pick up three hundred, but that was more because it was right. Exactly. I would, I would <laughs> most likely do the same thing for one three fifty and four hundred because you get those are milestones. Oh yeah, but I have not been. And I used to be so invested in Spawn. I like, loved like one through 100 and something and fell mm -hmm. off around there and then tried to come back around 250. And then I just, I didn't find the same love I had for it. Then. Yeah. It's, 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 it's rough, but honestly, I, I love this. I've always enjoyed just like what we talked about with Dan and Hellraiser and the legacy of the characters i've always loved that there have been different spawns yeah. throughout the world similar carry to like how there have been different ghost writers you know so um i i, I like the look i'm down to give this a, a solid try that's that's my two cents well it'll actually be 4.99 pay it up <laughs> 4.99 in my hand little no money. no 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 two covers max <laughs> oh yes <laughs> i'm here <laughs> I don't want you to put a second mortgage on your toys. Okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, this next story made me sad. Oh. So, um, uh, okay. Wolverine with the Infinity Gauntlet made you so, sad? Well, no. No, 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 no. So next year, 2024, Wolverine turns 50. Oof, that makes you sad. No. <laughs> No, what they're doing to celebrate it makes them no, sad. No, what makes me sad is I was born in the same year. Oh, really? Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, so uh, old man Leo now. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Oh. <laughs> old man Leo sitting on the corner. 
Uh, so uh, uh, Wolverine debuted in Incredible Hulk number 180 in 1974. Right. Unlike Six the one where everybody says it's 181. Good job, Leo. 180. It's on the last page, folks. Continuity uh, cop, Leo Pond. Yeah. Yes. Uh, six years later, he uh, started his own series, a miniseries in 1982. And for the 50th uh, anniversary, we are going to get a shit ton of covers. I want them. Well, hold on. Oh, I, I, I actually don't... want these. Along with the covers, uh, mm. it, I counted 15. I don't know if there's going to be more of them. They should have no. They should have done 50 covers. I think that's what they might do. Okay. Well, actually, I counted like 24 issues. I'll pull it up. Uh, but anyway, along with the covers, uh, we're going to get a special series. And I believe this is what Chris Claremont was uh, referring to at his panel on Terrificon, where he was working on a special project. So uh, legendary writer Chris, Chris Claremont is going to be writing uh, with artist Jim Lee. Uh, Madripoor Nights, right? Where mm -hmm. we're seeing Wolvie we'll meet up with Captain America during World War II to rescue a young Natasha Romanoff, right? Uh, and uh, there's going to be special reprints as well. So I'm assuming we'll get a uh, reprint of 180 and and the uh, miniseries and a new variant program. Uh, this all starts in January, and oh my God, they they're referring it to as the Snicked family. Yeah, and uh, and then they're calling these Wolverine, Wolverine, Wolverine covers. I was like, so he's the Canadian Beetlejuice? Wolverine, Wolverine. Yeah, I, was like, I just like that they all homage old school covers. All right, okay, yeah. so Jeremy said he was going to tell me what each of them were. And right, that's a Silver Surfer cover. Okay, no, that's that's that's, that's 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 amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. So that's Infinity Gauntlet. Yep. Yeah, I love number that. one. I'm, and that's going to be on that. Avengers. I want to grab that one. All right. Well, uh, and that's that's the Vision one. I remember. Yep. yep. Enter the Vision. That's, that's Amazing Spider-Man. Right. That's Green Goblin and, and supposed to be Green Goblin and Spider-Man. That's that yep. famous cover. Yep. Oh. Um. Oh, that's a uh, giant size. Yeah, giant right. size X-Men. Right. Okay. I. All right. I got nothing for this. That's one. Like it's like a classic X Men cover. That's just it got that's got some Neil Adams vibes to it. Mm. The big head in the background. Next, yeah, that's going to be for Black Panther number eight. Hmm. Okay. Uh, well, uh, Carrie knows this one. Anybody? Have your can anybody yes. What is this? What is this? <laughs> have your Who's Ritter? Volume three, issue one. Yay! <laughs> Next. That's Fantastic Four. That's yeah. their. First, that's from their first appearance. So, yeah. that's just Steve McNiven drawing Wolverine. Yeah, yeah, because it looks I good. Know. I don't know the homage on that one. No. Oh, that's uh, Todd McFarlane Spider Man. Yeah, yeah, that's a cool one. <clears throat> oh, another oh, one. That's the that's the Amazing Spider Man three hundred. Yep. yep. Right. I like the the costume and the shine and gloss on that one. That's really nice. Yeah. I just have to say it because I say it every time this comes up, uh, my issue is stolen. Yeah. Uh, it uh, hurts me every single friggin' time. Especially because it's so expensive now. That oh, yeah, is, I know. That Secret Wars. Wars. That's the, the referencing the black, the yeah. black uh, Spider-Man suit. It's a Secret Wars issue eight or seven, eight. Oh, that, that's the Incredible Hulk. No, no, no. No, Amazing that's Spider-Man. Spider -Man. Oh, yeah, you're right. This is... Uh... Spider-Man no more. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, this is from the Ramita era. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh... Oh, Amazing Spider-Man 361. Right, the Venom holding the Spider-Man. Right. Absolutely. Beautiful cover by, by Lennel, yeah. of course. Right. Uh, uh, that's uh, from Absolute Carnage. Yeah, I think. Yeah, it's from a Carnage. It's a Carnage cover. No, Carnage USA. That's what that is. I don't know what that one is, but... That's a lot of Wolverine. That is a lot of Wolverines. <laughs> I don't know. Looks, 
looks uh, like one of the ones. Ahead. <laughs> and now, the, and oh, now the next oh. new story. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. My bad. My bad. Like, my bad. Uh, so there are only like two that we didn't know exactly where they came from. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? What does that quiz say? You're nerds. Oh. <laughs> Winners. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Issue number eight. Issue is yeah, no. Uh, uh, but the Snicked family, no, I, no. I, Leo, just, just, just don't buy I into it. I do appreciate how they did the homage for three hundred instead of having the number in the background, having the Snicks back there. Yeah, that that okay. is cool. Yeah, uh, listen, it's not as bad as I thought, but I'm still not supporting it. I'm probably going to oh. get ten of them. So uh, hold on, I'm going to bring up the issues. It's going to be. Starting in January uh, with Captain America number five, Doctor Strange 11, uh, Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man 2099, Venom, uh, then Avengers, Blade, Miles Morales, uh, Spider-Man. Yes, it's a shit ton of, uh, looks like 24. Yeah, you got sensational She-Hulk, Wolverine, and then ASM, Black Panther, Daredevil, Fantastic Four, X-Men, of That's course. That's the sad part that it's not all for Wolverine. Books. Yeah. Yeah. Immortal, Immortal Thor, Spider Woman, Superior Spider Man, and Punisher. You know what they should have done is just done, you know, Wolverine oh, covers. Wait, wait. Avengers, Dead X Men, Incredible Hulk, Spider Boy. Done. Yep. Uh, they should have just done a year long event and just did I agree. Wolverine covers, you know? Yeah, maybe do it bi monthly too. And so yeah, and do a couple variants per month. Yep. You know? That People are going to be so. All. Sorry. Oh, no, no, go ahead. No, it's, it's, like, it's like, too much, Carrie. I agree. When, when, when I started collecting comics, if I was to go and, like, pick up Doctor Strange number four and see, like, all it was was Wolverine and then there wasn't Wolverine in it at all, I would be that like, what the fuck is going on? You know, I, 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 I would have had a... no clue if I was a newer collector. No, I, 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 it's happened to me before. You pick up a Batman comic, Green Lantern's on the comic cover you go to read it and there's nothing about green lantern in here at all this is bullshit false uh, advertising well, I, I, we, and then you realize it's a variant cover honestly it's just it's just a variant overload and it's yeah. it's it's too much so just like what we talked about i won't support it but i just i well i was telling yeah. carrie let uh, i think it was last night um I was looking at new comics for this week that were coming out and every single comic has at least like four variants to it. It doesn't matter. It's not like they're number ones or anything like that. It's they're just variant overload. Yeah. It's too much, man. And it's, it's like that for all the publishers. Everybody's yeah. guilty. Yeah, exactly. It's just too much. So, you know, our way of saying no is not buying it. Right, Leo. I'll try. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, next. Uh, actually, hold if on. If I can find somebody that's selling all those covers in one bunch for a, a decent price, I might get it. Uh, here are all the issues that have variants this uh, week alone. No, we didn't need to oh. see it. Oh, God. Why? You made it a reality, buddy. Yeah. Uh, Look at that. Ooh, Detective Comics 1075. No. Nope. <laughs> You do Detective oh and Batman? Yeah. We talked about No More Hate. I, I haven't picked up a detective since New 52. Holy fuck. This is insane. Ooh, that's a cool one. Actually, yeah, it is. I'm 58. I like when they do that negative space thing. Yeah. This is also Independence as well. Immortal Thor is getting a special variant. Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Your point well, we'll stop. <laughs> Overloaded. You're still All going. Right. That's <laughs> All okay. right. Next. This yeah. is so much fun. All right. On November 29th, X-Men Blue Origins number one will be hitting the shelves to tell the true origins of Nightcrawler with much Mama Mystique love involved in a one-shot written by Cy Spurrier with art by Wil Wilton Santos and Marcus Tu and a cover... Um, by Francis Manipal and the variant cover by Russell Dowderman. That's the variant. Um, this is going to be running alongside Spurrier's Fall of X series, Uncanny Spider-Man, which was released already. Um, issue one was on September 20th. Uh, mm -hmm. So Kurt Wagner appeared first in giant-sized X-Men uh, back in 19, May of 1975, written by Len Wein. Wein? 
Wayne? Wine. Um, wine? Okay. Well, I think so. Um, and his origin said. has been played with by everybody who's ever written them. Uh, so far, pretty much the only agreement is that he is the son of Mystique and Azazel and is a devout Catholic. Um, back as far as 1981, Chris Claremont, who created Mystique, a.k.a. Raven, Raven Darkholm, and Destiny, a.k.a. Irene Adler, who guesses from the Sherlock universe as well, which had Mystique posing as Sherlock in disguise every now and then, um, they were supposed to be lined up to be lovers, and they were going to have Raven become a man, and together they were going to father and be the biological parents of Nightcrawler. However, wow. the uh, comics uh, code authority at the time said, no, 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 no. That ain't going to happen. So we've had all these different changes, and now finally, um, we're size courier is going to take on, and uh, since they can be a couple, it is going to be revealed exactly what Destiny's role was in the affair between Mystique and Azazel, and uh, we will see then what she has to do with Nightcrawler. Um, so mm -hmm. there's they're basically retconning everything according to this. And it's going to just be a nice little one shot. This is exactly what you need to know about Nightcrawler and Raven and this. And this well. is by this is uh, by Chris Claremont. No, no this, this is, is by Size Courier. Oh, my bad. Yeah, who's been working on the character for quite a bit now, and he's doing great work with that uncanny Spider-Man yeah. series we've been I've been <clears throat> raving about with you guys. So definitely keep an eye on this because he's talking about. Essentially, this is going to be the definitive origin. Like, essentially, there's been a lot of twists and turns with this origin over the years. They want this to kind of be the, the the concrete one that kind of explains it all and then establishes this is the true origin. So, gotcha. So this is that setting it straight. So, okay, hey, why not? Looks cool to me. One like and done. On, on both of the covers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's uh, interesting they had the two different artists work on it. I believe it was um, uh, Marcus, Marcus Toe or two. Uh, uh, okay, Marcus Toe did uh, only the first couple pages, I think. And then the rest of it was done by Wilton Santos. Or okay. reverse that. But you know, there's some pretty neat art on the pages there. I, I think it looks really beautiful. So hey, all for it. And they okay. only have one variant. Uh, we we need to stop skipping holidays. Like, why the fuck are we talking about Valentine's Day already? Okay, but Whoa. this is a great <laughs> story. No, yeah, but, yeah, does, why does it need to be discussed on? now? No, no. But, but about Thor's when day. you no, no, Leo and Leo and Jeremy, I agree with you, but when you hear this pun. You're gonna like it's called DC's How to Lose a Guy Gardener in Ten Days. Ah, okay. So I not. agree with you. It is a little much, but this is an eighty-page one-shot published in Valentine's Day. A bunch of characters going on dates, successful or not. You're gonna have Marguerite Savage, Dennis Hopeless, Aaron White, Brendan Hay, George Mann, Danny Lore, Alex Gare, and others. And then you have Marguerite, Ivan Sharon. Emil Sanipo, Benada, Rivas, Ted Brandt, Rio Stein, Leonardo Rodriguez, a hilarious cover by the great Amanda Connor, a uh, variant by Ariel Diaz, Christian Ward, and then Dustin Nguyen. Uh, I It's only $9.99, and I have to read the synopsis because this is killing me. Romance is rarely a simple affair. Love is almost always to follow some sort of conflict. Whether you're Plastic Man twisting yourself into knots trying to please someone, or The Flash traveling back in time just to make a catastrophic 51st dates perfect, or even a lonely robot who just can't seem to find love unless it's mail from a computer screen, like Red Tornado, love is actually a pain in the 27 dresses. So in the grand tradition of these dating conundrums, a la rom-coms of the 90s and 2000s, we are proud to present eight new stories about love and trying to find it in this zany world. So nine ninety nine per variant. Per variant. Per variant. 
Which one are you going for, Leo? You can only choose one. I if I had to choose one, I'd go with the Guy Garner one. I'm I'm on the Nightwing. Yeah, yeah. but is is Nightwing currently with Batgirl? Like yes. I have no idea. But I'm reading the series all over his booty. I'm I'm reading the series. He he is with Batgirl right now. Oh, okay. But he's still on good standing with Starfire. So I was like, okay, so we made that work. Um, so since I, I learned recently and I asked you about it, his butt cheeks have been named. Which one was she touching on the cover? They have been named? What? Yeah, what? I was really confused on a Reddit post where they were talking all about Nightwing's butt. And apparently it's like, become such a thing that somebody named each one and they have like conversations about them as if they are like characters themselves. I, I know they made fun of it on uh, Harley. Harley. Yeah. yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah. They, they were part of it was joking, but part of it was just like, Oh yeah. We really like so. Well, I can't remember. That is something I'm not going to Google for you, Carrie. So. No. Okay. And, and, uh, and, I'll look at it. Oh my time. God. There's a whole like, Oh there, my there's, yeah, there's a there's a oh. wormhole or jar, there's a hole to go down here. Jar, jar, yeah. jar, close the computer. I don't want you to you want to get infected. Oh my god. They, no, they, close it, buddy. Like Nightwing's uh no, Nightwing's no. buck uh, but a thick history of Dick Grayson's butt. <laughs> I'm just like, what's going on? Yeah, that's that's what they call on the street, thick Grayson. Thick Grayson, T H C C. Yeah. All right. So well, so while you don't go down that line, everybody, <laughs> February 6th, that book is dropping. I'm going to check it. I don't know if I'm going to buy it, but I'm kind of interested to check it out because that pun is great. <laughs> so that's all I'm going to say. And Guy Gardner doesn't get used enough. He really doesn't. Yeah. But it took, he got taken out in one punch. But I, Leo, I think that's all the news. Uh, Carrie added yeah. some other stuff. What did you add? Oh, oh my God. What the hell? No? That was all the stuff. Yeah, don't put it up now. That, well, oh, okay. I mean, we can. It was all the extra dance stuff if we were going to go over oh, it. Oh, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Stuff for Daredevil and for Axel's Infernal if we had time. But you should have brought we, it up. We did. <laughs> we, we had the time and we left I, it. Good. No, no, I, no. I, I know. The, the, the yeah. images, you can click the button. You're allowed to so, click the button. <laughs> so, okay, well, let's do this I, one because this was a really cool one. This is the one that he was talking about. Um, with all we discussed this with him, and he had a, a better image of it that didn't have the um Axel's infernal part on there. But this was like the weird hellscape that the truck is like driving out of with all sorts of images of different monsters from different hells and stuff that they're, they're trying to get out of so they can move on and do their deliveries and things like that. But that, that's a sample of the artwork and. Give you a couple others. Um, I feel with just, Dan's work, it, it's it's educational and entertainment. Agreed. It, it was a, it was a really good time having him on the show, and uh, with that, and we'll give you guys a real quick one sneak peek of just the ink of upcoming Daredevil. This is his upcoming Daredevil armor, black armor stuff. Hey, yes. uh. Carrie, um, if you have some free time, you know what would be awesome? Uh, each of those images you have, I would say share them on Hellfire. Do each one as like a post and then like a small blurb about what the image is and then just reference his uh, Kickstarter. Oh. And hey, DG has a Kickstarter and is in on so many days. Um, Absolutely. Well, like, that <laughs> maybe do each one like daily. And that is a conversation we will have after the show. There uh, we go. Uh, uh, we'll, wrap yeah. it up, we'll wrap it up. Last item I'm going to add. This just popped up today. Uh, did me. you know the Marvels uh, has a uh, record? It's uh, yeah. record breaking. I don't know why they. Hey, j Hey, j -Bo. I'm sorry, what? A... So, so uh, the Marvels is breaking a record. Okay. It's not even out. Yeah, but it's breaking it? a record for the uh, <clears throat> the shortest Marvel movie. It's clocking oh, really? in. Really? Yeah, an hour and 45 minutes. Wow. Well, that's that's still long. <laughs> 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 yeah, 
just over two hours. Uh, I got to leave my house still for that long. No way. Yeah, yeah, Leo, you know what's going to be considered a record? We do a Marvel movie that's 90 minutes. That, yeah. That'll be a record for me. But just like we're trying to do longest show. Yeah, I know. Uh, we're going to wrap things up. I want to thank everybody for watching this fine evening. You know me. Just Google me. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. Uh, Jar Jar. Hey, it's Jar Jar. Follow me on Facebook. I'm Jeremy Courtney. Check out Comic Book Lovers Buy, Sell, Trade, and Auction House, where you can buy, sell, and trade all of your geeky stuff. Um, also, check out the re uh, education of Nancy Ann Ritter on Spotify and wherever else you can find podcasts. And oh, are, are we doing a Midweek Geeks this week? No. No. Okay. Uh, so I won't do that. <laughs> uh, Carrie. Hey, everybody. Uh, you can find me and Reddit Oscar either here on the Dark Hang on Splash Pages and sometimes Midweek Geeks. Um, otherwise, look at Carrie Sanders on Facebook. If you see an, a crow, that is me. All of my links are there um, over at Owlight and here. And yeah, you can just find me there. It's fun. I. I Write things to me on any of my people, and uh, I'll girl Friday. I'll get back to you probably, and then let me know that you spoke. So awesome, oh Mr. Drew. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Drew, and uh, <laughs> as you saw there, that's my Instagram, Ghost Mister Man 1984. Um, and just if you want, e and if you want Leo's email address, message me on Insta and say that you saw me say that, and you'll get that and more. But yeah, uh, you can find me on Facebook. Uh, I'm also on Instagram. I'm working on writing regularly again for Screen Rant. So those will be all posted on my page and such. Um, working on a lot, keeping busy, and always working to make this the best thing you could do on Tuesday night. Awesome. With that, we'll catch you later. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.